Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, wanting to take a look at the Star Wars The Black Series General Hera Syndulla from the Ahsoka series. Hera was an amazing character in Star Wars Rebels, and I was so excited when they ported her over to the Ahsoka series. I think they did a great job with the casting, the costume design, all of her scenes in the show. Very well done, and I'm really excited to finally be adding this character to the shelf. Let's get into the review and see if Hera lives up to the hype, if she's something that you should add to the collection. <laughs> So here we have General Hera Syndulla in the packaging. Let's go ahead and give it a quick overview before opening her. Up at the top, you have your Star Wars The Black Series logo above a big window showing Hera and her singular accessory off nicely. You have Star Wars Ahsoka across the front with her name being General Hera Syndulla. Warning, 4 plus Hasbro. This side of the box features some really nice artwork of Hera from the series, looking pretty cool. The bottom of the box has her name. Around this side, you just have your wraparound window, wraparound blue stripe, and your Black Series logo at the bottom. Around back, you have your Black Series logo. Zoom in on that artwork of Hera. Her name and a bio in several languages, except it's not a bio about Hera. It's a bio about the show. Like, get over it. Like, give them character bios on these shows. Damn it, the show's over. She's number six in the Ahsoka lineup. You have a bunch of legal stuff. Disney, Hasbro, below that's more legal stuff and a barcode. Up top is a hanger tab and a window, which allows some light in the packaging. If you choose to keep your figures on display, it makes them pop a bit. I'm not that kind of collector. I actually like to enjoy what I collect, so I'm going to open her. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we get here. So here's Hera out of the box. Let's start by taking a look at the accessories, or I say accessory, e because she only comes with one. It's her blaster pistol. It's the same type of pistol that she carried in Star Wars Rebels. However, it is a unique sculpt to this. They didn't just reuse the Rebels Hera pistol. It's cast in a dark gunmetal gray plastic, which is nice. They use that for the grip and the trigger guard. And then the upper body is in a chrome silver with copper and gold punch-ins on each side. It looks very nice. Very well painted, looks very chromed out, and it's just nice. It's a nice looking Star Wars gun. She features a trigger finger on each hand, so she can carry it on whichever side you prefer. She also features a working hip holster. You just lift that strap, cram the blaster in. There's a little peg on the strap, you get that pegged in, and it is nice and securely stored. And while it's not a separate accessory, I will say that just like in the show, she comes with more cake than any action figure should ever have. So yeah, all in all, very accurate Hera. No, the review's not over yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at this face sculpt. So, there are parts of it that I like and parts that I don't like. She could kind of get a little big-eyed in certain frames of the show, and so like I feel like this captures it well. Um, I mean, like it's it's not a bad likeness. I can't say it's perfect, but like I look at it. And I do see live-action Hera in it, so I guess that's all i got to ask for. She has a very nice kind of light green skin tone going on. She has the kind of, like, you know, boxer brief, you know, hat going on that all the Twi'lek gals wear. With the goggles, which are mounted, they can't actually tilt down. Round back, you do have her Laku, like, coming through, and they have, like, the markings on them. They're perfectly circular. Those aren't tattoos, are they? But maybe they are. Who cares? So she, other than that, is wearing her general jacket. I love that little silver, you know, five red button patch there. She has the Sabine Wren uh, Phoenix Squadron shoulder patch. The side of the box, is, or the side of the coat, wow, is just an orange circle. Yeah, and then around back, she has whatever that stands for. So not sure I'm super familiar with that. But underneath the jacket, she's kind of just wearing this, like, brown shirt with the kind of like a burgundy stripes up to the burgundy collar and then she's wearing her orange flight pants down below covered in ridges and pockets and the belts and overlay and then they go down to the nice flight boots so she's very inspired by the rebel series and it's very close to what she was wearing in the star wars squadrons game that no one played actually kind of a fun game i never finished it but i should get back to that honestly it was a pretty good game vanessa marshall voiced her there too like i can't plug that hard enough so Speaking of Vanessa Marshall as Hera, I do just want to throw in a little comparison, not necessarily to Vanessa Marshall, but um, to the Rebels Hera. I just want to bring her in and just do a little comparison here. As you can see, the figures, you know, in the live action was inspired by the, uh, you know, the animated series one. Now, this was Hasbro's attempt before we ever knew what live action Hera would end up looking like, so they had to take the animated fit design and kind of make it look real. I think they did a pretty decent job. Um, they kind of just didn't really make her resemble anyone in particular. And I gotta say, I still really do like this figure. But this 
this definitely is good for what the live action figure should be. And yeah, I mean, just it's nice putting them side by side, seeing the evolution of Hera, of Hera here. So yeah, all in all, I do like how the characters, like just wardrobe and everything has changed over time. And this feels like a very fair representation of what we get in the show, which is honestly all you could possibly ask for in this kind of thing. So I'm going to run through the articulation, so let's get into that. She features a double barbell neck, which allows her to look that far forward, which is awesome. Now these Leku are like hard rubber, like firm rubber, so that's all the more you're going to get her to look up straight forward because they are into her back. So that's a little unfortunate, but that's just by design. That's not Hasbro's fault. She can look side to side, however, the Leku kind of have to like go over the shoulder, which then tilts her chin down a bit which isn't great, but again, it's not Hasbro's fault, it's Lucasfilm's. She can do a ton of tilt, though, express all that attitude she has. Her arms can come up to a T-pose where there's a good butterfly joint, 360 at the shoulders, single-jointed elbows, and go past 90 and rotate, 360, and vertical hinges on both wrists. She features a mid-torso ball joint, which allows her to crunch that far forward, that far back, and get some side-to-side -side and pivot. Her legs can kick out and do basically a full split, which is awesome. She can kick straight forward, not much back, all that cake gets in the way. There's no upper thigh cut, which I like because this is such an exposed upper thigh then it's got so much line work going on where like it would look bad. It just it's just what it would. It would look bad. It has single jointed knees, which go a little past ninety and then rotate at the knee. That knee rotation makes up for the lack of thigh rotation. I know some people don't think that. It does. It, it they, they negate each other. The feet can point, if you work at it, it can point straight down. You can go a little bit forward. There's a forward-facing pin for rocker, so you can get some decently wide stances with both feet flat on the ground. Get her back into like a neutral position here. And let's bring in a couple of characters just for some size comparisons. Here she is next to the Ahsoka series Sabine Wren, looking pretty cool. Here she is next to Ahsoka. This is the Mandalorian packaging one because I'm not buying the same figure again because it's an Ahsoka box. It's not different enough. So, technically the Mandalorian Ahsoka, but it's what she wore in the show. And yeah, all in all, it looks really good, and I like how these are scaling. So, all in all, what do I think of General Harris and Dula? Enough said. No, no, for reals, for reals. What do I think of General Harris and Dula? I really like this figure. She does a great job representing what she's supposed to in the show. I will say the face isn't 100% there, but it's pretty close. It's 90% there. Um, some phenomenal articulation. Nothing's really restrained. It's a very, you know, lack of... It's a very overlay-lacking design. It's basically just a pilot suit with a jacket over it, and that's really cool. I love the vibe. Um, I love just how this figure... This character translated to live action, and then how the live action translated into figure form. Um, it's going to be up there this year, I gotta say. I don't know it'll make the top ten figure of the year list, but it's a pretty good figure, and one that I'm really happy to have on the shelf. I think if you're a Star Wars Rebels fan, if you're a Star Wars Squadrons fan, all two of you out there, and if you are an Ahsoka series fan, I think that Hera is a must-add to the collection. There is no question about it, and Hasbro's done a pretty good job on this figure, so I think if you pick her up, you're going to be happy adding her to the set. And that's really all I gotta say. I'm I'm incredibly happy with this one. I think you'll be too. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. It means a lot that you did. If you enjoyed, you should leave a like, comment, subscribe um, the comment section down below. And I will catch you next time. So until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye. <laughs>